What's up guys, welcome to another edition of Toothpicks. Today we're gonna to be doing a little something different other than we're cooking on the grill, as I usually do. I promise you guys I'm gonna be doing some things for people that don't have grills in the inside the home. But today, I'm gonna to be cooking some thick boneless pork chops on my Nova sous vide cooker. This thing right here, stay tuned. All right, so let's check this out. Got these two pork chops right here. No seasoning on them. And it's just simple steps, guys. This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna, I got a food saver bag. You can use a Ziploc bag if you want. Uh, you can do a, what you call a displacement method if you don't wanna have one of these food savers that I have over here. But I got a food saver, so we're gonna use this today. And I have this seasoning um, that I get out of, it's called, out of Marion, Texas, called Chupacabra seasoning special blend and this has a little lime seasoning it's a little spicy i use this on a lot of chicken but it also goes great on pork some other things we got today guys we got some rosemary and we got some garlic and we got some of this Kerrygold gold irish butter so let's get started so the first thing we're going to do is guys you know i like seasoning so we're going to season these up real good can't stand folks that don't know how to season food, but there's people out there, you know who you are. So, get all that seasoning on there. No need to put any oil on this. You don't have to put any seasoning on these. Sometimes you can go to the butcher and you can just pick them out while they're in the crowd vac. A little, I missed a little spot right there, so let's get that on there. And it's not gonna make this salty, guys, but what it will do while you pre-season it, it will actually like infuse the meat with a lot of seasoning. So I'm gonna wash my hands over here. Cause I just touched some raw meat on um, with the seasoning. I don't wanna get it on the outside of the bag. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put these two, kind of open your bag up. Put the first one in there. Open your bag up. And if you get some seasoning on your bag, just wipe it off. Okay. Throw your rosemary in there. Throw your garlic. And then cut you up almost about a tablespoon, tablespoon and a half of butter. And I don't need to have that. It's gonna go all the way through both of these pieces of meat. All right, set that to the side. Okay, so I'm gonna take my sponge, just gonna wipe my area off a little bit. Get that all wiped up. So I want to get the rest on my bag. And we're gonna set this right here Kind of wipe these edges, guys. So what I'm about to do now is I'm about to put in this food saver and we're gonna take the air out of this bag. So what you do, you come over here, pop this open, put it in this slot. And these bags do not come pre-cut sometimes. I got a roll and they do have some that are pre-cut, but I just rather had a roll so I can make my own sizes. Lock it down. I'll put it on the moist setting you can't see that really, and then hit the vacuum seal. And basically this will go until all the air is out the bag and this can sense when the air is out and it's properly sealed. So now it's sealing, and then a little light should go off when it's done. Okay, so now check your seals, make sure they not any, got any gaps. If you got any moisture over here, Kind of get that out a little bit. And that's how it's gonna look, guys. So while this is sitting, the next step we're gonna do is gonna, we're gonna turn on the Anova cooker. And as you say, sous vide. And I got it set at 145. 145 is like the minimum temperature for pork. Um, it's gonna be real juicy. 150 to 155 is probably your, um, your medium rare um, or your medium. So this 145 would be medium rare. So I want 145, and yes, you can eat that with pork, guys. I won't go no lower than that. And with this uh, sous vide cooker, it's, I mean, it's gonna really make a difference. So let's go ahead and push start, and we're gonna let that come up, guys. 
And this probably should take uh, maybe about 20 minutes or so, depending on how cool your water is. And so while this is going, stay tuned and we'll be back and we'll come back and we'll put these in. All right, guys, so we've let our sous vide come up to 145 degrees. It's set at 145 degrees. There's an app for this on your phone that has recipes that you can set for different types of meat if you want. And it has, they have timers because people made their own recipes and you can lock it in like this via Bluetooth. I'm not gonna do that today. I'm just gonna keep a manual timer, look at my clock on my stove. And here we are, we have the meat. You can see the butter and the rosemary and the garlics in here. All this is going to cook in here, guys. It's going to penetrate this meat. It's going to be so good. Trust me. What this sous vide cooker does, if I did not tell you already, is it allows this to cook very even. Um, large cuts of meat, um, cheaper cuts of meats that you might not get a good taste out of. You can't afford like um, more expensive cuts of meat. It's going to make those taste even um, better. But it, more importantly, even temperature when it's done and even wellness. So it's gonna be done the way I want it at 145. Um, when this comes out, we'll go over as the temperature goes down, bring it back up through some searing. But for right now, we're gonna drop this in here. And another way, like if, if I didn't tell you a way you can do this is do possible displacement uh, using a freezer bag. And what you would do is set that freezer bag in here with all your seasonings and you set it in there slow, open, and it pushes the air out. And once you push that air out and it kind of sits in there, there's no more air in the bag, you clip it on the side of your container. If you don't have one of these guys, you don't have to have one, um, one of these Cambro containers, food containers, um, this little lid I got on Amazon, I'll put links to that down in the description. Um, but you can use it like a regular pot, if you have a regular pot, pot, uh, stock pot, excuse me, that'll fit one of these circulators. Um, another thing is water, as you see, this water's not boiling. Guys, this water's not boiling at all. It's, um, if you see it moving, it's because the air is circulating this heat through here. So that's another thing to know about this Anova cooker. There's a different other cookers out there. I think there was one called Jewel. I haven't used that one yet, but this is the one I've had for quite some time. So let's go ahead and open this up. Okay, so you see that condensation right there and the steam's coming out. And all I'm gonna do, guys, I'm gonna drop that down in there. And you see it out of, is it a sink right there? Go ahead and close this lid right there. And as you see, the temperature came down, but it will come back up, guys. It will come back up to 145. That's because I put something that was quite cooler than the water um, inside that, and it brought the temperature down, of course. Um, so it's gonna come back up. Once that comes back up, guys, um, we'll be coming back, taking these out the bag, and we'll be getting ready to go ahead and sear these jokers and cut them open and let you know um, how they look. So stay tuned for that. Hey, what's up guys? Um, so it's been about two hours not just about, maybe at two hours and 15 minutes. And now we're gonna take these out of here. Now this water is pretty hot. So what I do, I got some tongs. We're gonna go ahead and grab this. Just wanna get a hold of it. Let's let some of that water drain off of there. Okay, so I'm just gonna set this on top of this box. And I want to show you how that looks right there. Has some, uh, you can see that it's all turned a different color inside. Um, there's some, there's your um, rosemary, there's your garlic, all the butter is all the way out through this, guys. So what we're gonna do now, I'm gonna set this paper towel down right here, it's a little wet. Um, but that right there is just for, cause we wanna dry these off. We wanna dry these off real good because we wanna make a crispy crust on these pork chops. So let's go ahead and 
cut that away. Take our tongs. We'll set one on here. Set another on there. Put that rosemary right back in there. Set that in the sink. And what I'll do now, as you see, the color is a little different. It looks ugly. Yeah, we're not finished with it, but they're practically done. If you wanted to eat it like this, you could, but I don't want to. So let's go ahead and dry these off. Get these dried off. The key to drying anything off, uh, whether it's pork chops, whether it's steaks, is when you're doing it either a cast iron or a um, nonstick griddle, it allows it to make a crust real nice. And that's the reason why you take these paper towels. And that's why I put one on the bottom, just so it can, you know, I don't have to pick it up and turn around and then go ahead and dry the other side. It's already doing it, see? Set those right there on the cutting board. Take these. Put them right there. Throw everything away. And then now we're gonna take these over to the griddle, get our griddle warmed up and go ahead and make a crust. And that should not take long at all. All right, guys, so I hope you can hear me in apartments. Of course, you gotta have a little smoke fan on when you're doing something like this. So I'm not gonna use my cast iron, but I'm gonna use this all clad um, griddle that I have. And this thing makes phenomenal um, steaks, pork chops, I mean, vegetables, whatever you may call it. You can even put some grill marks if you want. I'm not too much focused on the grill marks today. I'm gonna do my best, promise y'all to see if I can create some. But um, other than that, I have this thing been heating up for a little bit. Sometimes you can, you don't wanna put this on, I mean, very high heat in this, in your place because it's gonna burn what's so not and it's gonna just smoke everywhere you're gonna set off alarms now if i was outside on the grill yeah i'd, I'd be I mean, flamed up everything it just the flames up charring this thing you know to um smithereens not burning it but <laughs> you know what i mean so i got this hot and you know really you want to kind of see when it gets hot these all clads i mean they really cook even and it's pretty much hot guys so let's go ahead and set these on here. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna set them at an angle, and you can hear that. Set the other one at an angle. And but guys, I'm not really doing nothing. I'm just creating a, a, um, a crust. That's all I wanna do. Now, being that these have been out uh, sous vide for a little bit, just sitting and resting, I am, I know the temperature has dropped internally doesn't mean they're not cooked, just dropped eternally. And um, so I do have my Thermalworks, you know, Thermal Pop right here. I've had this thing for a couple years now. It's having went bad on me yet. Um, I doubt it will. They got some other ones, got some links um, in the description where you can go to uh, my affiliate uh, website and you can check them out if you want to get one or not just check them out anyway. So these are very good, guys. Thermalworks makes some awesome products. So I'm gonna use this to uh, monitor the internal temp. And just to show you that it has dropped, let's go ahead and put one in. It has dropped significantly because they're, they've been out about 15 minutes, okay? But these things are pretty much done and it will come up fast. See, that's already at 120 coming back up. And I, already ha I had it at, what did I say, 140? So we're just gonna leave those right there. Kind of mess, I'll probably mess the grill marks doing that. So let's just leave this right here. And watch it, um, watch it cook. So these have been cooking for at least maybe three minutes on one side and it's not gonna really stick. And just on what I failed to mention, guys, I already oiled this pan uh, when I bought it. Through a little, so I use the avocado oil to oil this to um, pre-treat it. Um, I don't have to really do it. You can add butter and stuff if you want, but you don't have to. As you can see, it's kind of smoking a little bit. I don't know if you can see that on video. And pretty much when these release from the pan, I'm not sticking. Even if you had a cast iron, I mean, th 
Now, that's when you know to turn it if you want to turn it. So let's just turn this over. Right there. Now look at that. Looking real good. And if I, at this point, if you want to, you can throw some butter in there if you want, just to get it a little more. I might throw a little bit of avocado oil. Av avocado oil, guys, it, um, it has a high smoke point. I don't know the exact you know, numbers on that, but I know it does not burn fast. If I wanted to uh, um, add some butter in here, I would throw a little bit of olive oil in there just to get it to sizzle a little bit more. Matter of fact, I might just do that just to And that should spread out real good. There we go. Cook those on that side right there. And being that these are um, big chops, some of this area over here, I know it's not gonna um, look cooked, but I will hit it on the side once I, I get some little marks on that side. Let's just see what it is now. Let's look at the um, temperature. If I wanted to. 140, 143. You see how fast that came up? 147 right there. And that's pretty much, guys, that's that's what you want to do. It's not going to take long. Like I said, when it come out the, um, the sous vide, it's pretty much done. I'm just making color on it now, guys. I don't, I don't really care about the other side. Just going to... Um, I'm just looking for get color now. So if I wanted to, let those sit up like this. On the side, if I can get it to stand up. <laughs> Maybe I'll put it in between one of these marks right there. Ah, that's not gonna work. Do one at a time, maybe. Let it cook on that side a little bit. If I had a cast iron skillet, I'll probably have some butter in here and some more that rosemary I had and that garlic. And I will put that in here and kind of just baste it as it went. Get your color. See how I'm getting my color on that on the edge. And it doesn't take long. And this is just like like I said, guys, for people that are indoors, don't have a grill, or you can't always go out there, you know, try this. Get you one of these things. I don't know if I'm be able to get it on that side or not, but I do not want to overcook this and dry this out. So that's why I kind of got it up right now. And it's going to be very hard to dry these out being that it came out the sous vide co um, cooker. That's what I like. You see that edge right there? Look at that. Look at those marks. That looks good. I'm going to put this on my cutting board. Do this other one. That's smoking pretty good. Hopefully my alarm doesn't go off. All we're doing is getting color. I don't know which about you guys, but I love crispy edges on any meat. Put that down there a little bit more on that other side. All right, so we're gonna take this other side. See if I can get some of that bottom sliding all over the place. Okay, there we go. Let that cook a little bit. There you go. Put that to the side. Cut that off. And next, guys, we'll be taking it over to the cutting board. I'm going to let these sit about 10 minutes over on my cutting board, and we'll go to slicing. All right, guys, so here is the final product. These have been sitting maybe about 10 minutes. Got a nice little crust on them. Not the perfect, you know, um, 
real marks, but you know, they'll do. Had this, like I said, a Chupa Cobra special blend to season all from them. Very good stuff, guys, made here in Texas. Got my little fancy cutting board out for y'all. And let's just take one and let's cut it. I don't care which one it is. Let's just see. And I'm gonna cut it from anywhere, guys. I got one of my good knives out here. I want to show you how good that, that thing cuts. And these are thick. Look how that is falling apart, guys. Look at that white meat in there. I'm not struggling with this. Man, that looks good. Of course, you gotta eat these. Mm, 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 mm. Good stuff, guys. I don't know if you can see that juice. Look at that right there. Nice crust. Not pink at all. Look at the juice on that. Not even squeezing it. Just juicing. And this is how they come out in the sous vide cooker. I'm just gonna cut this other one in half. One little cut. Just gonna show you. Look at that. Perfect. Your steaks will come out like this and your steaks will be solid red throughout that. Perfect cuts right there. Perfect meat. Perfect in my eyes. Maybe not in yours, but mine. And that's it, guys. Uh, I hope you like this video and there's many more to come. Um, I mean, first time having to, you know, put some video out there, some stuff I do inside, but you know, multi-talented, so I can do things both ways. You know, hopefully some of you guys that are, don't have the grills or the smokers um, like some other of us have here in Texas. Usually everybody in Texas has one. Not everybody. You know, you can find some time in the kitchen and just like you was out on that smoker, you know, you're not, or that grill, you know, you're not gonna get the same effect as far as the smoke is um, involved, but, um, and then, you know, just the ambience of being by the pit, but, you know, you're gonna turn out some real good food. So stay tuned, you know, in the future for more videos and thank you for, you know, tuning in and we'll catch you next time. Toothpicks. Okay, now you're, Am I looking at the camera? Yeah, you looking at the camera? I'm not looking off like this. I don't know where I was looking Yeah, that you looking off like that. Okay, if I'm looking at the camera. Yeah, I hear you looking at the camera. Okay. All right, okay. wait, okay. Okay. ready? Yeah. Okay, push start. It is starting. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to another edition of Toothpicks. Today, we're going to be doing something different. Just. Wait, I want to see. He said different. <laughs>